Hey everyone, Joe here. Today I have a tutorial on EQ Basics to help you understand how using an equalizer can improve both your music and voiceovers in your videos and live streams. But before we get started, check out On One Photo Raw. On One Photo Raw gives you control of your photography and what matters to you. On One gives you an open system for complete control over your storage, organization, editing, and method of purchase. On One will also never be a subscription only model. Learn more and download your free trial by clicking the links in the description below. Okay, everybody. For this tutorial, we are going to be using a TDR Voss Slick EQ. Now I have the gentleman's edition opened up and this is the plugin that I use to get the tone stuff that I want in my vocals and other audio stuff work that I do. And well, I actually chose it for various reasons. One, it's only a three band EQ, although the bands are adjustable. And it's uh, got a little visualizer so I can show you what's going on when we change the tone and stuff. And you can see where on the EQ it's actually changing it. And three, well, well, other than it's really a good one, you can download the uh, free version of this. And so that means whatever you see me uh, do here, you can do on the free version as well with the exception of the tilt filter and low pass filters. Those are not on the uh, free version. But uh, this uh, tutorial isn't about slick EQ. This is about general little equalizers, little basic one-on-one -on -one tutorial. So what I show you here will apply to most any equalizer you uh, find out there. And it's pretty much, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's hardware or software, you know, at least you'll learn what changes the tones and stuff of your audio here. So, you know, that, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's on a mixer with three bands on it or if it's on another plug-in, uh, you know, little software EQ. Pretty much what you learn here will apply to those as well. Now, that said, let's kind of get over here and get started. And I'll go over the basics of an equalizer. Now, on your equalizers, uh, sometimes they may only have a low and high. Sometimes they may have a low, a mid-low, a mid-high, and a high. And those are normally like four band EQs, which are more common. Three band ones are not that common except for like hardware. And this one actually has some uh, frequencies. Some frequencies are fixed. This one isn't. This one lets me just you know, as low as I can low here, as low as 30 hertz, up to 1000 hertz for the frequency, default to 85. Then the mix also has a mid. Let's see, go as low as 100 and as high as 10K. Then the highs here, let me go down as low as 500 and all the way as high as 40K. Now also on this one, uh, we have a high shelf and a bell filter. Well, a shelf filter here. So if I do like this, that's the low shelf. If we run it up, you know, boost it. That is a high shelf. And when you lower something, it's referred to as a cut. And you raise it, it's referred to as a boost. Okay, now, that is a shelf, as you can see. Let me just run it out, say, like, 400 or 500 here, close enough. So you ought to drop it. That can boost the highs, the bass areas, the areas of the voice that give the deep bass. <laughs> or we can cut those out and accentuate more of the highs. Okay. Now, you have another option here is the bell. And the bell is basically, it's, this kind of drops down like a little bell there or raise it up like a bell and this lets you uh work on you know a you know, more narrow band of frequencies okay now the center here has on this particular one has a, a regular bell then it has a more surgical bell you know if a tighter q value which i'm not going to go into uh, q values on this tutorial however do look forward for my uh parametric equalizer tutorial that I'll be doing in the future. So, and of course, just like the other one, if I raise this one up, I can move it around or cut down here in different tones. And pretty much the same goes for the highs, just like the lows. You know, have a shelf filter. Let me just that center. Pull this, bring it up, lower it down. As you can see. All right. Now, most EQs, you will find a high-pass filter, which is also known as a low-cut filter. Now, by default, I put this one on 60, but it can go anywhere. 
run it up and it basically what it does it cuts off a frequency at a given point you can see we have two different types of curves we can put on that one and what this one does is for example if i you know raise this up say like 100 hertz everything over on this side where you can see it's dropping off at 50 you know starting just a little before 100 all that information is or sound which is information is removed so you're not going to be hearing it and let me play some music so i'll show you how this affects you know the audio as you can see i have it set to out so you can see that it is reducing everything that's going out and if i pull it all the way back to 10 uh, hertz you have a much fuller you know more bassier uh, sound okay now why would you want to do this to your audio well there's a few various reasons and i set mine at 60 hertz pretty much default on most of my stuff and that's to help with rumble there is inherent rumble in everything from the outdoors natural rumble inside any office to rumbles when you're banging on your computer desk to even the wind blowing causes a rumble and what you want to do is you want to bring up the high pass filter to the point where it's not really affecting the audio quality that you want to get just enough to reduce any kind of background rumble like i said uh the wind blowing on the outside of a house that can echo even though you won't be able to hear it it can actually get into your audio and stuff and this could be important for example if you really want to cut it out even if you don't hear it as you don't want that rumble to actually get into for example your gate or an expander and keep opening those up so even if you don't hear it it might trigger other of your effects and stuff within your uh, effects chain so you want to cut that out like i said i normally set mine at 60 because the my vocal tones and stuff it doesn't seem to be affected by it so i normally put like this one and you know, just lower cut just something to kind of help keep the rumble out okay so let me go over the EQs and stuff here. Now, if you've ever uh, had like a home stereo, this is pretty much the same, folks. There ain't really much difference. Let me set this back to the default to 85. And I'll bring this up with the bell. As you can hear, that's really giving that music a much deeper bass. Actually, sounds quite nice. Now, let me reset that back to zero. If we pull this down, as you can hear, it's taking that bass out. Okay, back to zero again. Now let's go up here to mids. Let's boost the mids. Let's bring the mids more forward. Or we can cut those out, letting you only hear more of the bass and more of the highs. Now the highs seem to be a little low on this particular audio clips. So let's bring those up a little higher. Yeah, that's starting to get that. You can hear more of those, the drum cymbals and stuff. Of course, we can always pull this back, but just in the frequency. On this particular one, we can even cut off the mids if we don't want to use them. And I can set this, say, to like 25 or 2.5 kilohertz. And I can actually just use a bell on this one, set it to about 100 hertz, and boost that. And you can hear that, how that changes your audio, the music here. And you hear bypass it, and you hear without it. Let me turn that back on. Wonderful. Okay. So that's how the uh, EQ stuff affects your music. But however, I really want to focus more on, for example, your vocals and stuff. So let's hop over and listen to one of the vocal tracks. Okay, everybody. So now I have a vocal track opened up here. And let me just kind of get this set up. Here we go. So let me play the vocal track and you can hear this. I hope you enjoy my EQ Basics 101 tutorial featuring TDR Voss Slick EQ 
and learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A Studio Condenser Microphone. Okay, so that's how the audio sounds. It sounds kind of very flat. Well, this microphone's response curve is very flat. So we need to make this sound better. And so what we're going to do is first, I'm going to actually cut these off. And I'm going to go over the entire spectrum of here, you know, both you know, lows to highs. Let you hear what it sounds like when you boost a frequency and also reduce a frequency. So let me play this back again. I hope you enjoy my EQ. Choose a more surgical one, -on -one, one for this one. Featuring TDR Voss. Let me go all the way up and start at 10K. Improve your audio by using and let me boost equalizer. this by 12 dB, for which is tutorial, I am speaking quite a lot. But it should really insinuate the uh, audio stuff. Microphone. I hope you enjoy my EQ. So this is at 10K. Tutorial now let me pull it down to 5K and let you listen to it. And learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A Studio Condenser Microphone. As you can tell, that does kind of help make EQ things easier to hear. One tutorial featuring but it could TDR sound a little too sibilant. And learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. Let me drop this on down to 2.5K. I am speaking into the Samson CL8A Studio Condenser Microphone. As you can tell now, it sounds really mid-forward. EQ Basics 101 tutorial featuring TDR Voss Slick EQ. And especially when you get down to 1,000 uh, hertz, using an equalizer. it gets very mid-forward. I am speaking into the Samson CL8A Studio Condenser Microphone. Very nasally. I really don't like that. I hope you enjoy my EQ Basics 101 down to tutorial 250. featuring TDR Voss Slick EQ. And learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. That's close enough. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A Studio Condenser Microphone. And it really sounds I'll like, you know, my EQ Basics 101 you're talking into a TDR box, box or something. EQ. So yeah, that's how, how that sounds. Audio by using so let's go on down to 100. For this tutorial, I am And this is where you start finding Samsung a lot of your bass at. A Studio Condenser Microphone. Okay, that was boosting. I hope you enjoy my now let's uh, cut everything out 12 dB and let you TDR listen to the vocals. EQ, and learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A going up to 250. Microphone. I hope you enjoy my EQ Basics 101 tutorial featuring TDR Voss Slick EQ and learn how to okay, improve your audio 1K. by using an equalizer. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A Studio Condenser Microphone. I hope you enjoy my EQ basic okay, it's going up to 2.5K. TDR Voss Slick EQ and learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A and going on on up to 5K. Studio Condenser Microphone. I hope you enjoy my EQ Basics 101 tutorial featuring TDR Voss Slick EQ and 10K. And learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8. Okay. So let me turn these back on and reset everything. So you can give you an idea of what parts of the audio that you might need to adjust, depending on how it sounds. If it sounds too nasally, you might want to cut it. If it sounds like it's been not enough you detail may want to bring it up so let me show you what i normally do to set up for example my microphones and stuff that i use in this uh you know like in this video for example so let me play this and i'll adjust these a studio condenser microphone and first like i, I mentioned i'll pull it on up about 60 hertz one tutorial featuring tdr voss slick eq and learn how to improve your audio by using an As equalizer. you can tell, that really doesn't affect my vocals any at all. I am speaking into the Samson CL8A. Some microphones, for, for example, like the CL8 I'm using here, actually has a 100 hertz built in. Here's why you may not want to use that. And learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. Here is at 100 hertz. For this tutorial, I am speaking Let me cut that on and off. Samson CL8A Studio Condenser Microphone. I hope you enjoy my EQ Basics 101 tutorial featuring TDR Voss Slick As you can tell, it's subtle, but it does cut out just a little bit. 
Or this That's why I recommend or between 80 and 40. CLA-A and like for example right now, I said I'm using 60. You, like I mentioned before, you just want to adjust this to enough where it cuts out any kind of rumble and that's not triggering your gate or your expander. Okay. I want to bring up the bass in this vo uh, vocals a little bit. Now for this one, I am going to use a bell. I hope you enjoy my EQ Basics 101 tutorial featuring TDR Voss Slick EQ. Now that sounds pretty good, boosted by only 3 dB. Using an equalizer. And I highly recommend you try these in like one and a half dB increments and see what sounds good to you. Condenser microphone. And bring up the four and a half. My EQ Basics 101 tutorial featuring TDR Voss. And let's go up to six. And learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. And pull it back For down to three. Tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A. I think 3 dB sounds pretty decent. I hope you enjoy my EQ okay. basics. Now let's go up to the highs, and I want to boost the highs here. EQ and learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A. Let me use a shelf here. Studio condenser microphone. I hope you enjoy my EQ Basics 101 tutorial featuring TDR Voss Slick EQ. That sounds pretty decent, how to but I don't audio, think I'm going to use the bell the instead. For this tutorial, I am speaking into there, the... There, now we have more clarity around 10K. Studio condenser microphone. Okay. Now, I still I got a little bit of the mids I don't particularly like. Let me choose the regular bell TDR here. Voss Slick EQ. And, learn and let me reduce that down just a little bit. Using an equalizer. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A Studio Condenser Microphone. And start to about 3 dB. I hope you enjoy my EQ But we want, don't want to drop this too much. What happens if I drop this too much? EQ and learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. You start losing For some clarity and stuff in your vocals. The we don't want to do that. We just want to take the harshness Studio out. Condenser Microphone. So normally between about one and a half you enjoy my to three EQ is actually pretty decent. Tutorial featuring TDR Voss Slick EQ and learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. Listening to this for this tutorial, I am for this uh, demo track I did, I think negative two dB was where, where I would want to put it. Microphone. Okay. I hope you enjoy. Now I didn't mention the low uh, pass filter a while ago. TDR it's pretty much the inverse of a high pass filter. And, to improve your audio and basically, what this does is it prevents any kind of other information on the high ends getting back in. If you're recording like on 16 bit, this is definitely something you do want to use. Prevent any kind of higher frequencies uh, getting reflected back into your lower frequencies. And learn how. And that's a tutorial in its own explaining that. This However, tutorial, I highly recommend you just set it at 20 hertz and just let it set. Now, the free version doesn't have the low-pass filter. You enjoy my it only has the high-pass filter. So featuring TDR Voss Slick EQ and learn how to improve you can adjust your it however you want it. An equalizer. That just helps For prevent any other frequencies getting back in. The Samson CL8A All right. Studio Condenser Microphone. Now, let me stop this for a second. I didn't mention the gain a while ago. And this one right here, the gain is pretty much like any other gain. This is your output gain. However, my, this particular plug-in, I didn't mention it, has an auto leveler. And what auto leveler does is it takes the volume or the gain signal coming in, and it matches that going back out. So a lot of times if we adjust these, for example, if we just adjusted the lows and the highs and boosted those, that would also boost the outgoing gain. The auto adjuster on Slick EQ here automatically lowers it back down. So making that a non-issue, we can just adjust however much you want without boosting the gain. So enjoy my EQ you can turn that on and off and you'll be able to hear it. And learn how to improve your audio by using an equalizer. Yeah, it's For this tutorial, only much, not much, it's probably 3 dB's CLA difference. A studio condenser microphone. I hope you enjoy my yeah, EQ it's about 3 dBs looking at the view meter here on uh, Resolve Studio. And learn how to improve. So yeah, this one has that auto gain on it. Now, if you still want to boost it up more, you can, and that'll boost the entire you know signal chain. Or if you want to manually pull it back down, you can also. And I'll play this and show you. Audio by using an equalizer. For this tutorial, I am speaking into the Samson CL8A. Studio Condenser Microphone. 
hope you enjoy my EQ Basics 101 tutorial featuring TDR Vox. Now, most people recommend to do only cutting and stuff. However, that this particular type of uh, you plug in here, it, it'll automatically, you know, like I said, level out your gains and stuff. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Especially on software EQs, it's something I really wouldn't worry about too much either. It is something you need to watch on hardware EQs especially. So you may need to have to rebalance out the gain. That way if you're, you know, recording into the computer, whatever, at negative 12 dB, your final audio is coming out at negative 12 dB. That way you're not actually adjusting the EQ up too much and it's pushing it, you know, negative 6 dB or something higher that could cause it to clip. It's just something to watch out for, you know. Now, this particular one has a tilt filter, which I will show you right quick. And let's you adjust the EQ on it. This isn't something you'll find on most EQs. But in case you're just wondering, and it's listed right here, uh, this is a feature of Slick EQ. I'm not what, uh, sure what other uh, VST plugins might have it. But read up on, uh, on it some more, or do like I mentioned earlier, watch my demo review of Slick EQ and learn more about it. But yeah, that's EQ basics for you right there. You just want to uh, make take out the harshness and make sure the audio is uh, clear and you know very easy to understand and uh, full and rich without sounding like you're talking into a kit tin can. So anyway, I hope this little basic tutorial helps explains the EQ and how you can adjust them to actually make the audio sound better, both your music and your vocals. Okay, everyone. So, yeah, I uh, hope this tutorial really helps you uh, understand how an EQ can improve your vocals and stuff and what the highs, lows, and uh, you know, and mids all do to adjust the tonal quality of your uh, vocals and your music. So, anyway, if you're interested in Slick EQ, like I said, I'll post a link for it down in the description below. You can get the free version, and that'll help you get started if you don't already have a you know, decent equalizer. But if you're interested in supporting this channel and stuff, do check out On One Photo uh, Raw. The links for it will be down in the description below. And purchase it on One Photo Raw and it does help support this channel as I'm an affiliate with On One. But anyway, that said, if you like this video, how about giving me a thumbs up? Thumbs up's always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel yet, please take the time to subscribe. Subscribing's free, it's for you, and lets you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.